Alright, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist and on my YouTube channel I show people how to color comics and in this series, this series is called How Not to Color Comics. So I'm showing you some things that um, are very common problems, things that a lot of beginner colorists do, things that I used to do, and so it's it's easy for me to recognize these days. And we're going to look at a couple of pages and today I want to talk about value and contrast. Um, I've said this before on the channel a couple of times, and you guys have, that have been around for a while have probably heard it, but um, Dave McKay told me once that colors don't matter, you know? And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> this is a colorist telling me this? Colors don't matter? And then he finished his sentence. He said, colors don't matter because only value and contrast matter. I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So I want to show some, a couple of examples today. Um, the the first one, this is actually me from when I, the first, this is the very first thing that I think I ever colored. And so it's, I don't know, five years old at this point. And what I mean when I talk about value and contrast is in every panel, there is a focal point. There is something, usually one, but sometimes more than one. Uh, there's a, there's something that's the most important thing in the panel. And your job as a colorist is to make sure that that is obvious and that the reader doesn't have to wander all around the um, the panel wondering what's most important. You don't want the eye to just go, where am I supposed to be looking at? What's going on here? Um, and so this is an example of what not to do. <laughs> now, um, so in this first panel, let me blow this up so you guys can see it. This first panel, I've got this character here that is uh, ringing the doorbell here. He's a, a, a detective that is a bug. And um, the most, the brightest thing in this panel, the thing that grabs the most attention are these windows, which are almost, uh, well, I want to say that they're useless in the panel. They're not useless. They're important from the background, but they're not that important to the reader. And, but you can see that they get, they, they garner a lot of attention here. And the values between this wall and his jacket are very, very close together. So, like for example, if I put this in black and white, there's just not a huge shift in value there between this and this. There's barely any difference at all. And so your brain's going, well, is this is this important? Is this important? There's a little bit of uh, yellow that you see here. You know, that's what I mean when I say value and contrast. So. And to just sort of quickly show you guys an example, if I was redoing this today, you know, I would get a you know really bright color, and all of this through here, you know, would would be the brightest thing in the panel. I might even outline his arm there or something. And I'm just kind of roughing this in, uh, you know, simply. But you know, I wouldn't do as much with that window back there. And this wall would definitely be a different color. Um, and it would be it would be lighter. It would be darker. It would be something probably lighter. Um, this entire page is also entirely too dark, <laughs> by the way. This is before I started following my own rule about the amount of K in these colors. So this would, luckily this was a digital only thing because it would not print this way. But um, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I talk about the um, amount of black in these colors, then go back and watch my How to Avoid Muddy Colors video. But uh, anyway, like I said, I would have toned down this uh, these windows a bit and... Uh, yeah, we would have just done that very differently. Um, second panels, not quite as bad. You got the big bright light there. And then we're kind of back into the muddy here with the last panel. Um, again, in black and white, all of these tones are, are very close together. The background, her skin, you know, his jacket and the floor, it, it all sort of blends together quite a bit. So, you know, again, instead, you know, figure out what's important in the panel and make sure there's plenty of contrast. Make sure there's plenty of, uh, well, value and contrast. There's another way to say it. So that those uh, those things in that panel are, uh, they pop out there. I hate that term pop, but <laughs> it's a cliche, but um, yeah, you want it to pop out. What else? We have another page from that same story. Again, this whole background and, um, and, and him is all in the same value range, so. Uh, this you can't even see the detail in the in the desk because I've used such a dark color there. Um, another panel from that same or another page from that same book. You know all these values are all very close together and entirely too dark. Uh, should have done something different there and make that pop a little bit more. 
All right, so to go to some some better examples. Now, actually, uh, colorist uh, Mike Spicer was kind enough to allow me to use this. He will go back and recolor some of his old stuff. That I think that he's just done for fun. And this was a image by Sean Murphy, who is one of my favorite artists in the world. He's an amazing artist, and you could probably just spill coffee on these pages, and it would look good. But um, this is an example of one of my, some Mike's older work, and he he recolored this page to just kind of show how far he'd come. It's actually what why I decided to do this video on this subject because it was such a great example of a before and after with the the same image, you know. Now this is his original. Now this is not bad, of course, by all means, but you'll notice, you know, in black and white, really what's pulling your focus here most? It's it's all of this, um, that's an interesting effect, um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's all of this back here, um, excuse me, I've got that set to a weird mode there, but, um, oh, it's set to saturation instead of color, there we go. So really the Batmobile is what's the most kind of the most contrast you get this light color around the dark Batmobile and so it's kind of pulling your focus and Batman's kind of lost here a little bit now if that was the look you were going for that's fine you could push this even more though um, you know you see when I color pick this gray it's really not that bright so the brightest thing on the page is still not that bright so Mike recolored this image so just toggling this you can see the the difference here so now Batman garners your attention in this page much better so you've got this really lighter color along here so your eyes kind of pull to it immediately and there's a little bit more contrast between the Batmobile and the uh, the ground here but not so much that it's overpowering Batman which is in this case the most important thing going on in this panel in this page you can really see the difference in black and white if I toggle that that new one off and on you can see that it's a very big difference now you know if you zoom in here and look at this and this is just a JPEG so it's the quality's not fantastic but you know he's not doing any super fancy rendering here or it's not really technical it's just hitting the important points hitting the bright spots with that lighter color so that that part really pops off the page and even at a at a distance and if you stepped way away from this page you would still say okay here's sorry here's the most important thing in the panel this thing right up here in the, in the top right corner so now the other thing he did no even though today we're really just talking about value and contrast we'll throw in a little bit about some some color theory stuff in here the saturation levels okay so in the original you know this greenish blue which is a great color uh, overall I, I do like that as an option is really close to some of this background in here that same kind of greenish color and and it's the same down here so your your mind's eye your brain wants to sort of put these on the same level together you know you're it's it's subconscious we don't really think about this but that blue green color will your brain kind of wants to flatten it out. It says this green is the same as that green. You know, that's how we're able to tell, you know, distances. You know, as things get into the distance, they get less saturated and there's less contrast. And it's just something that's kind of hardwired in our brain. So you can see when in his in his newer version, he's kind of got a cool warm thing going on. So Batman is is all in these cool gray colors. And pretty much the entire background is is warm so you've got kind of a yellowish orangey color so you can kind of see what I mean when I say that the colors don't matter um, now of course they matter to an extent that you don't want to color Batman purple and pink at this point but but just to show you guys a quick example and I didn't actually test this ahead of time so we'll see how this looks but uh, I'm just gonna get a gradient map and just do something different here purple and orange all right, set it to color, and I can desaturate this a bit or turn some of this opacity down. You know, even in a completely different color scheme. Now, this is obviously it's not a perfect color scheme, but it's a good example of what I mean. Even in this crazy color scheme, the value is what's creating the focal point. You know, that bright spot is still that bright spot. And if I go in and do something different, red and green, still here's your value. You know, your value is right up there at the top. So uh, your brightest value and your the most contrast all these lights and darks are you know, what, what your eye is pulled to so 
that's what Dave McCaig meant when he said colors don't matter. That's how, you know, I picked up some of John Rock's work on uh, some Batman and Robin book. Forgive me for not knowing what it is. But, um, you know, it was the scene where it was a night scene that was almost entirely purples and pinks. I was like, that's so awesome. It looked it looked incredible. This is a Batman book with a purple sky, and Batman is, is in, you know, fuchsias and magentas, and it still looked awesome. Anyway, this video, I hope you guys have learned a lot. This is something that I am learning more and more in my own work that I would I would I, I learned something about this, and then I started applying it, and the harder I pushed it, and the more I pushed it, the better the work was. And Mike even said the same thing today when I asked about using this image on in this video. He said the same thing. He's like, I thought I was doing it, like I knew about it, but I wasn't doing enough of it. So, And I find in my work, the more that I push that difference, the more that I push more value, more contrast, it lets you be really creative with your color decisions. You know, you don't have to do every single thing by the book because if the value and the contrast is there in the page, then the page works. I want to thank Mike Spicer for donating this uh, or allowing me to use this in this video today. Uh, if you guys like this sort of thing, uh, be sure to check my uh, description down there. You'll find links to my coloring course and also links to Mike Spicer's uh, uh, website and all of that. We'll link him down there as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Take care.